All right, I said I was going to try and do this once a week, so it is week two. And this week, instead of something simple like pizza, we're going to do a recipe that's sort of my own concoction. And it's a little spicy, so if you don't like spicy foods or Cajun foods, that kind of stuff, might want to move on. But this one's called uh, Raging Cajun Pasta. So it's a fairly healthy meal. As you can see, it's colorful. It's got chicken instead of beef. And we start with about two tablespoons of oil. You can use olive oil. Uh, I use regular cooking oil for this because it tends not to be as harsh with the meat. So two tablespoons of cooking oil in a really hot, I use a Teflon sort of wok. If that's the case, you're going to want to use wooden utensils so you don't scrape the Teflon and then you get the uh, Teflon flicking off into your food because that is not a good thing to eat. So first ingredient, we got one whole medium or half a large onion. Pour that into the oil. Put all of it in there. You want to put in one whole clove of garlic. If you can uh, mince it, that's fine. If you've got one of those cheese graters with a little setting, you can, uh, you can grate it in there and it actually cooks faster. And I also have one each, one green and one red bell pepper. Uh, the colors I mean it's, the, you know, the old saying is that the more colors your meal has in it, the healthier it is. So you've got one green and one red bell pepper. And you'll let these saute until they're firm but not mushy. Like I said, you want to saute this and stir it occasionally. I'm using a wooden spoon, not a metal one, because there's Teflon lining this pan. Scratch the Teflon, Teflon gets into your food, Teflon gets into your kids' intestines, that kind of thing. It can cause problems down the line, they think. So you don't want to use any metal with your Teflon. So stir this up. I usually have this on medium heat. You do it on medium high, it'll cook it too fast, and it could burn it. Because what you want to do is almost steam it. So I've got the vegetables inside the pan right now. I've got that sitting. While I do that, I'm going to put the lid on the pan and turn it down to just under medium. I can use the gas stove. If you've got electric, same settings apply. Put it on there, let it saute, let it cook probably about five to ten minutes until the uh, onions are clear and the peppers are about, uh, you know, firm but not mushy. And then you want to cut up about two, I use two to three chicken breasts because I have a large family, there's five of us. So the one thing you want to have is a really sharp knife. Now, I've gotten some flack on the last one for the number of knives I have. Uh, the one on the right is really old, the one on the left is fairly new. Uh, this knife is really sharp. You want a sharp knife and you want to make sure you cut the stuff off and you also want to make sure you have some disinfectant around because you don't want to have a dirty cutting board after you just put chicken on it. So make sure you disinfect it, that after you're done. So two to three chicken breasts. I usually cut this up while the vegetables are cooking. So you can see now that the uh, the onions have turned kind of a clear, a translucent color right there like that. And the peppers, they've gotten a little less in color, but that's okay. That's uh, That means they've cooked a little well, but we haven't cooked all the nutrients out of them. We put the lid on and it kind of steamed them as well. So the next step is to, to get the vegetables out and we put the chicken in. So that's the next step. So we put the vegetables in like this. Now, if a few of them stay in there, it's no big deal because they're all going to end up in the same pot anyway at some point, so that's okay. So we've got the vegetables in there. Next step. There's still some oil left in here from when we did the vegetables. Just leave that. Don't add any more because it'll, you don't want to have a greasy sort of pasta. So you add the chicken in, and we're actually going to season the chicken as well once we're done. So as the chicken cooks here, add a little bit of this uh, Paul Prudhomme seasoning spice. This is a blackening spice. Um, we're not going to blacken the chicken. We're actually just going to season it. So I tend to put enough just to cover the, the top of the chicken and then spread it around so it seasons it. And we cook this chicken until it's fairly well cooked. Not browned as you, as you speak, but um, sort of fried a little bit so that it's, it's um, browned on the sides. We want it to be tender uh, with a little bit kind of a crisp outside, but not so cooked that it's dry. So... We add the spices to add some flavoring to the chicken itself, but we will also create a, uh, a sauce once we are done with the chicken that's inside this with the tri drippings from the chicken once we're done. Okay, so the chicken is done. You can kind of see by looking at it that it's got a nice sort of crust to it. If you take a look, the crust is right there. You can kind of see the chicken. Uh, the next step is to take the spices and make a roux, is what it's called, in the pot. About two tablespoons of butter and about two tablespoons or more of flour. And you mix that together. It'll get a little clumpy. 
and it'll turn sort of a yellowish color. You can see that there. That's called a roux. The roux is what we want with the drippings from the chicken because it will thicken up our sauce when we get to make it. Next step is adding some wine. We'll move the spices out of the way. White wine for chicken. Red wine works, but it's not quite as good. So some white wine. You add about a cup to two cups of white wine to your roux. Um, you can use this, although I use a silicone whisk, which I know I used last week, but that also helps you get rid of any lumps that the roux might have created. When, if it went too quickly or the butter and the, and the flour, you added too much flour, something like that. So the whisk will help get rid of that. You want to use silicone again because you don't want to use a metal utensil inside a Teflon pan because you can scratch the pan and you can get all health problems down the road if you're not careful. So you add the white wine, add the butter and the flour and all that, and you want to get rid of any lumps that might have been created from the butter and the flour. Next step touch of cayenne pepper, just a touch, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon to a quarter of a teaspoon. It is hot, so don't put too much unless you really like it spicy. Uh, paprika, you want to put about half a tablespoon of paprika in there. You're going to put even more chili powder. Again, it's a spicy recipe, so I'm going to take the lid off. You're going to put about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of chili powder in and stir that up. Cumin. Cumin is your next thing. Don't want to put a ton of cumin because it's got strong flavor, so maybe put a half a teaspoon of cumin in there. It's going to add a really nice kind of smoky flavor to it, but if you put too much, especially somebody who isn't a fan of, core, um, of cumin, it can get kind of a soapy flavor or texture to it, and you don't want to do that to them. So you want to stir this up, if it's getting a little too thick and, or you want it to be a little thinner, you can add a little bit more wine and stir it as it's going and get those spices together along with the roux so that it heats up. You don't want to cook it too fast because then you end up with a, uh, with a mixture that's too thick and it gets like a film on the top. You don't want that. Now, once it's cooking well, about a quarter cup of non-fat or low-fat milk. Add that to the mixture. Gets rid of some of the acidity. It also lessens some of the over-spiciness of it. Gives it a little bit of a creamy texture, which is okay. You don't want to put too much because then it's the, the cream overpowers the rest of it. So you let this cook and let it go. And the next step is... Pasta, which I tend to use fettuccine noodles because it mixes well with fettuccine. Fine, so we're going to add the chicken. And then we have our peppers, onions, and garlic. And you toss this into the sauce so that it's nice and covered. It's going to give us a spicy, though it seems like it'd be really, really spicy, but it's really not. It's not overly spicy. All the flavors the milk and everything kind of diminish it. You just get a lot of smoky flavor from the paprika, you get the chili powder, and the it's the uh, cayenne pepper that gives you that kick. So we didn't add too much of that just to get flavor of the cayenne pepper. And then once the noodles are done, we'll toss it together. And then we'll have dinner at the table again. All right, since we've tossed the vegetables and the chicken and everything in with the sauce, it's heated it back up. It didn't cool off enough that you have to be worried about it. It's just that we wanted to warm it back up so it's nice and hot when we mix it with the pasta. So there is the chicken and the peppers and the spices and the sauce and everything. And that's all in one bowl. And now uh, we're going to drain the pasta and then we'll set the table. All right, so it's dinner time. We got the pasta, we got the sauce. Hannah picked out the music for tonight. Jimi Hendrix, Girl After My Own Heart. So this is our second cooking segment. The recipe I made all my own. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you like it. Thanks for watching.